Welcome everyone, this is Activities Across Grade Levels, and we are focusing this episode on the power of an image. And so there's all kinds of wonderful and cool things you can do with images, whether you are teaching in person or online. And my buddy Susan and I are gonna share a bunch of cool thoughts with you today on that front. So as you join in, just make sure to join the chat because that is, that's kind of the active part of this as we go. We'll start by, by giving thanks, gotta give, a, gotta give some thanks. And we'll start first with Fowler USD. So all the folks uh, in Fowler who are, are on the, the chat or, or whether they are watching this as a recording, either way, very, very cool to have you. So thank you for, for joining in. I want to shout a nice, uh, shout a nice toss out. Toss a nice shout out to uh, Richard Byrne of Free Tech for Teachers who helps uh, share about these things. And he and I are going to be doing a thing uh, this Friday morning at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern uh, called Two Ed Tech Guys Take Questions and Share Cool Stuff because we are, are two guys who like to have fun with cool ed tech stuff, and we hope you will join us for that 30-minute shindig uh, this Friday. Additionally, a nice shout out to all the ISTE folks. Uh, the, the kind of sharing that's happening in, uh, in the ISTE commons right now is really amazing, the kinds of uh, resources, and, and they're good about making sure that the resources they share have some explanation to them, and I just sort of like, here's 53 resources. So, so that's a good place to go, as is, all of the stuff that uh, FETC puts out, Future of Education Technology Conference, uh, is, is one of those annual things that I, I certainly do not miss. And uh, love, love the good work they're doing to, to get information out to people as well. So thanks to both of those fine conferences. We are happy you are here. We are happy to meet you. And, and it's awesome that you have stopped and said, you know, I'll spend a little bit of my day with that crazy Rustin guy and some friend of his who is willing to spend time with him. And uh, that particular friend is Susan Stewart. And Susan, say hello. Hello, hello. I'm so everyone, uh, so glad everyone's joining us today. Yes, I am Susan Stewart. I am an instructional technology teacher on special assignment in Fowler, California. I like to just call myself a tech coach, tech coach Susan. And uh, I'm really excited to be here. I spent most of my career in kindergarten and second grade. So a lot of my experience has to do with young learners. Uh, and now I support teachers K-12 in my role as tech, tech coach. And uh, just really excited to uh, share with you today, Rushton. All right, well, I am tossing a couple of links into the chat. So first is uh, the Twitter handle for, for Susan. So if you guys wanna follow Susan, feel free. Uh, and then also, if you wanna register for Friday, feel free. That too is free because you know, at a time like this, we just need to be able to get the information and get it back to our kids and all good. My name is Rushton Hurley. I'm on the left. Uh, this is me and my babe wife uh, and uh, Tabitha and I, I were at a concert at the Chase Center, uh, when, uh, soon after that opened, and we got that, that fun picture at that spot right there. But just so, just so you're wondering, right, you know, does, does this person talk to people in person? Yeah, clear evidence of it right here. Uh, I'm a former high school teacher. Uh, I was high school teacher of Japanese language. Anybody else? Raise your hand. Same numbers always. All good. Uh, and a former principal. I was principal of a K-12 school and then principal of an online high school, which has put my, my kind of expertise in demand and just recently. But... Um, about 15 years ago, I started Next Vista for Learning. This is my own little nonprofit Save the World thing. I hope you will give this a look because lots and lots of really, really nice videos. These are videos that are made by and for teachers and students everywhere. And here is the link in the chat to that. Uh, what you'll find are tons and tons of videos about different academic things. So a kid says, here's a way of looking at this, right? And they find some cool way to put the video together and that's what that is. Global views are about communities in different places. If you want your kids to tell about like what's special about their community, we love to highlight it on, on our site. If uh, your kids make videos about the good that people and organizations do for others, that's, that's in seeing service. We'll tell you a little bit about a contest uh, on, on that front soon enough as well. We've also got videos about careers. We've got videos uh, for English language learners, these really short pieces that are between say 30 and 60 seconds, over 600 of them. How much is that? It's free. You're so nice. Happy to help. So, uh, so as you look at the different things that are on the site, you know, just send any questions that you may have. So, so why are we doing these webinars? Because as you know, we've got to keep the learning going, right? You know, it, it's important for us to be reaching out and finding ways to allow the, uh, the different tools that are available to us uh, to, to become more and more and more for our kids as we all begin this exploration of online instruction and in a way that would have seemed a merely academic a few weeks ago. But uh, the truth is that, that now more than ever, your kids need you to be someone who encourages them to explore things in, in really interesting and innovative ways. 
and and we're all working on it and we're just we're sharing ideas and that's what makes uh makes for a nice silver lining with the cloud that, that hangs above us so how's this going to work today we're going to talk about uh about a particular kind of learning activity built around uh built around images and we're going to talk about as many different types of of working with that activity as you can imagine uh, as we talk about it at different late grade levels right so the differences are important you know we think about things like you know wh what is a what does a teacher do with an image uh, like a high school teacher with an image what, is, what does a kindergarten teacher do with an image we're going to look at things in that way and my guess is that that kindergarten teachers will learn from the stuff for high schoolers and vice versa because that's what a really healthy district looks like when people are tra trading ideas all up and down the levels so our focus this week is on images uh, this is perhaps like the easiest way to uh, to use tech and and to intrigue students so it'll be exciting for us to share these ideas with you and we'll start with the young learners and i'll hand it over to susan susan yes so we're going to talk about uh, young learners and images and i really like to use images with young learners specifically because uh, especially with our pre-k and tk and kindergarten students they may not have traditional literacy in place yet right they may not be able to read or write just yet but they can still tell stories and they can still demonstrate um, visual comprehension if they're not there in that form of literacy. So I really like the fact that everyone can take a picture and they understand pictures and they understand pictures in their world. Uh, you know, what's developmentally appropriate for a young learner is right inside their world. And so they can photograph what's around them. Uh, I love doing concept scavenger hunts. This is an example right here where uh, we might have been learning about three-dimensional shapes in kindergarten, we were talking about the cylinder and the sphere, and uh, when a student is able to see one of those in their real life, right? It's not just this thing that's drawn on the board at school, but as I'm going through my pantry before lunch and I see, oh, look, mom, it's a cylinder. So giving students a space where they can submit those kinds of things. It's their, their life, the learning connecting to home, and especially right now when everyone is at home, we can have them connect the things we want them to talk about to what's around them, what they can take a picture of and share. So sometimes we'll have students share various ways. We'll use Seesaw, we can use a Padlet, different shared spaces where they could take photos from their life that connect to what we're learning. Um, I also like using images as conversation starters. Our young learners don't always have a vocabulary around some of those heavier topics about being lonely or uh, perhaps about you know sad or angry. So if we show them a photo, maybe that helps them develop some language for um, talking about feelings, right? Also talking about language development here, uh, when we're talking about our English learners especially, but all young learners that are language learners, uh, we have some activities we pair with the tool Seesaw. So I have some photographs and I pulled these photographs from various uh, sources and we ask students to take a look at them. Like, what do you see? What do you notice? What do you wonder? Who's in the picture? What's happening? Just having students really analyze a photo and then even go as far as make a word web that describes it. So we're gonna break down who's there, what kinds of words might we use to describe that photograph? There's kids, there's boys and girls, there's children, there's students. What are they doing? And so just having this opportunity to kind of brain through and map out all those different ways we might describe what's in the picture. And then we ask the students to compose a nice rich sentence using some of those words. And then we pair that again. So, so whether they're developing nice, rich beautiful sentences with good vocabulary and then we can capture that using seesaw we go ahead there the children are eating breakfast in the cafeteria the children are eating breakfast in the cafeteria now some students might have said they are eating right they are eating but because we've kind of spoken about it and you know looked at all the different ways we might describe this picture we can help the students uh, develop those nice rich sentences and then also going into some of the upper elementary, we can use photographs to help tell the story uh, of vocabulary. In this example, you can see it's a traditional, you know, or a twist on the Freyer model there. They have a definition. They have some synonyms about the word exhausted. They have a sentence they used about exhausted, but then we had them go do an image search. And I love having them search in those, um, search for images and especially use those synonyms as ways to look for you know other parts of that image or other examples of that image so when we search for sleepy or tired or exhausted do we get similar images you know and that develops some of that search literacy of how we can if we don't find what we're looking for with the first try could we use a synonym to find a better picture that represents this what we're trying to share so these uh templates here is something we could do with students and there's a template there you can Share and Rushton looks like Rushton put it in the chat as well. So just a Freyer model 
uh, vocabulary activity, having students build collages. And then we can also go into something a little um, more connected to our content. We can take some historical pictures. So in this example, this is uh, one of the, a picture from the Mill Girls story. This is the Lowell Mills. It had to do with the Industrial Re Revolution and child labor laws. There were a lot of children working in these mills and they were known as the Mill Girls. So we could take this historical photo and have students imagine themselves in that situation. I can write about this. I can say, you know, how, what kind of things might she say? If she were writing a letter to a friend, what might she say to someone? And so here it says, Dear Cousin Mary, and she writes her a letter about her experiences. So our students kind of put themselves into that situation. What would they say? What would the conversations be? But then we can go just a little bit further with the magic of technology. And we could really put the kids into the photograph. So in this example, I've taken a picture of some children and I use that tool remove.bg that quickly turns that image into a PNG or a transparency. And then in Google Slides, I was able to take that transparency and just put it right on top of that historical photo. So now when the student's writing that letter as if they were really there, wow, we're really there. And they're able to you know, even more connect to what, what, what it might feel like and just build some, some understanding of that. We do things like that with uh, perhaps, I know my fourth grade teachers, I have Jeanette and Debbie just showed up there. Uh, we have studies on the miners, the 49ers, and there's some really iconic pictures of the miners taking a break, all sitting around um, like a, a, a basin or a pond. And I think about, could we put the students into a photo like that? What are you feeling? What, what's going on? What are the conversations people are having? So we can take the students and physically put them with this, you know, photograph tool right into the experience. And that way they're understanding it from a different perspective. I love that, that it gives them a new way of thinking about what they're experiencing. So, so that whole sense of, you know, a teacher is presenting something and it's this other thing. And then, then you bring it into the picture and there's this sense of connection that, that sparks their interest, develops their, their engagement, which of course, you know, greatly enhances their ability to recall what we're talking about as well. Let's look at this from the standpoint of what happens with middle schoolers. So there are a lot of different possibilities. Uh, I'm gonna quickly leave this slide. However, do know that we're gonna give you the link to all of these slides. So you can back to any of this that you need, the links that are in them. Uh, there's just so much there that, that you can work with. Uh, one of my favorite things to do is ask students to look at two pictures that have perhaps no obvious connection and then to, to build a story. What is it that you see in these two pictures? Uh, is there something about them that, that allows you to create a narrative of some kind? And I've done this in a lot of different places. Uh, one of my favorite stories that ever came from this one uh, was when I was working with some, uh, some kids in, in Milan, Italy, believe it or not. And, and this one kid raised his hand and said, yeah, what's your story? And he said, okay, so the picture on the left, that, that's the present. And the picture on the right, that's the past. And in the past, they dreamed of being able to travel on things like trains. But in the present, they dream of the peace and simplicity of the past. And of course, we were all like, whoa, that was cool, very cool. And, and those kinds of moments, right, when, when someone shares something and, and, they, and people stop and they go, wait, wait, that, that was really interesting. That builds a lot of confidence in a learner when, when they offer up something that is immediately celebrated. You can take it the next step further by saying, build that story and, and tie it to this or that or, or something among these things that we've been covering in our class. And that can be really powerful for helping them think about what they're learning in your class in new ways as well. Sometimes uh, you just need that visual vocabulary piece, a little like we were talking about before with uh, some of the younger students. Now, now we want these things to be, th to be moments where, where they associate an image with words that they're learning. So I chose this, this cockpit looking situation, right, for complexity. Um, you know, how, how do, you know what, what for you represents complexity? And, it, and if they begin to say this does for this reason, you're getting them into it in, in a way that is far, far beyond when we used to just have a memorized definitions. So a lot of good possibilities for images and learning their vocabulary. Now, you can also get them in a space where they're starting to learn to cite their sources. Now, of course, you could do this with kindergartners in the sense that, you know, you go around, you tell, you know, something and you get kids to say things like, well, when Susan said this, I thought that. And that's a way of citing sources as well. But, but one of the things that sometimes happens is that our teachers will begin uh, teaching citing sources and they'll kind of go straight to MLA, right? Uh, as if we were doing college research papers. And, and I personally, I think what that does is teach kids to hate citing their sources. Uh, not that that isn't important, it's just a matter of teaching it at the right time. 
So if you look at the models that are out there for something like Creative Commons licensed material, and, and you can find loads of good stuff. Creative Commons license means it's, it's free, go ahead, but cite your source. And there are some variations on this as we go, but, but the basic idea is the name of the work, person responsible, you know, which site it was, not Google, you know, what, you know so Flickr or, or Wikimedia Commons or, you know, whatever it may be, openclipart.org, one of those. Uh, and, then, and then ideally the nature of the license, which may be for the, the more sophisticated students as you go, but here are the different kinds of Creative Commons licensing. And so you start seeing these kind of things out there like CC by NC 2.0. What does that mean? Well, it means that it's Creative Commons license. By means you have, to, you have to cite your source, provide an attribution. That's always a part of these CC things, right? Uh, and NC in this case is non-commercial uses. So uh, there's some other pieces there. There's some distinctions that, that you can explore. I'm happy to, to connect with you and tell you more about because I think this stuff's great, but also you know, I'm kind of into it, right? So, so there you go. But this is a slide that you can come back to as you're learning more and more about finding the stuff that's freely available because there's loads of good stuff available to you. You might also get your, your middle schoolers to think about, hey, what, what can we do with the pictures that we've taken? Uh, and, and even, you know, pull pictures in from different places and edit them, edit them in something like Snapseed. This is a free app. It's a free app for iOS. It's a free app for Android. It's, and it's wildly cool. You can do so many things with it. So the picture on the left and right, I took that picture on the left a couple of years ago, year and a half, whatever it was. And, and with just a few seconds of like, here's a filter, here's a thing, you know, apply, blah, blah, blah. That's what I got on the right. Well, why is this important? Because maybe what you're trying to do is emphasize elements of the picture in ways that, that kind of didn't come out initially. Or maybe you're trying to uh, convey different feelings with regard to, you know, what you see in pictures. And, and by doing different things with, uh, with editors, you can make that happen. Let's go to high school. Uh, so with high schoolers, there, there are another level of things you can do again. Uh, and, and some of them are kind of similar to what we've talked about before. But as we talk about them, we, we can take them to that next level. So for example, you know, let's say that you just put an image in front of them. And you say, what's the story of this image? And the story can be something that has reference to what you do in your class. You can imagine that with, with something like this, there, there are scientific you know, issues related to, to buoyancy and meteorology uh, and even economics, you know, like from, from the social sciences. Language, there's kind of an endless set of possibilities as well. Mathematically, given that the boat might be going just how fast, how, you know, how long would it take to get from X to Y? And, and how would you assume this, that, or the other about the distance? You know, what, what is it about the scale of the different items in the picture would allow you to explore that? Those are interesting things. As they're building creative stories around it, they're having all the more fun. I'll go to the next slide, which is this one. If you didn't notice, the only difference is the citation, but the citation is in a sense giving you too much information. If, if you're allowing them to put creative ideas together around this, you want them to be able to, to, to not be too constrained by, by what's already out there with it. Now, when you think about uh, trying to do kind of good mathematical scientific stuff uh, with, with, I mean, you, you can do anything with these pictures, right? That, that's why they're so much fun. But you know, you look at something like this. Well, in addition to, to things like uh, rate of consumption of, of, uh, of cupcakes by, by a hungry puppy, uh, you, know, you, can be, you can be looking at this from other angles as well. So, so maybe you look at this and you say, you know, what does this mean to my students? Well, you know, I may have a kid in that class who's never quite connected, but the kid turns out loves dogs and, and spends the weekend, you know, like going down and volunteering at, at the Humane Society and stuff like this, and you bring in a dog, you know, in a picture to, to try to illustrate a point, and suddenly that kid's like, ooh, there's all kinds of stuff. You never know what will connect you to a child. And so using these kinds of images, you are bringing so many more points of connection into your classes. For history, endless, right? And so, you know, there are sites like Wikimedia Commons, which is just a trove of wonderful historical pictures. And you're like, is that Wikipedia? No, Wikimedia Commons which actually houses all of the pictures for Wikipedia, so you know, but, but loads and loads and loads of good historical pictures. And so you look at something like this, and you can just start with simple questions. You know, when was this? And maybe the kids are zeroing in on, say, the, the clothing, or maybe that, um, uh, that, uh, that car that's in the back, right, and how, uh, how that actually kind of leads to ideas about, uh, you know, just, just what, what uh, time frame we're talking about with this. You could even ask, you know, what, what day of the week is it? And people are like, wait, what do you mean what day of the week is it? Well, it could be, if you look back at the kid in the background on the tricycle right back here, 
who appears to be in a suit, maybe it's after, say, church on Sunday, and the kid came home, and mom said, hey, you know, change clothes before you go out and ride your tricycle. Kid was like, hey, nobody got time for that. Got to get on my tricycle. And, and got out there, and that's, that's where that kid is. You don't know. Uh, but, but in talking through why the connections are there and what we're seeing and why it's interesting, these are cool possibilities. So there, citation, but of course. I think Street View in Google Maps is one of the, one of the cooler tools for doing you know, really interesting things related to images. And so you, you bring up something from Google Maps, right? You, know, you can screenshot it and, and kid, kids can start exploring. Well, well, what do we know about this picture? Well, it's a different language. What do we know about that language? Can we type that in to Google and search and see what we find and see if we can nail down what language it is? Oh, we, actually there's some flags there. Do we know what flag that is? Uh, you know, it looks like the, the cars are parked on, on the left side of the street, right? Instead of the right, what does that tell us? Uh, so, so, you know, oh, look like they're, 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 they're wearing, you know, headscarves. You know, what, what does that tell us about as well? There are so many interesting things that come from working with images, especially as you're trying to get students to begin to appreciate what it means to look at different, different places in different ways and to, and to use that as a part of, of how they begin to get a sense of the content that you cover. So let's talk a little bit about some promising resources related to images. Uh, there are several that, that I just love to share. Uh, and Susan, I'll get your help putting some of these in the, uh, in, in the chat, if you would. I, I, had a, I had a mild hiccup on, on the other machine, but you know, if that's the worst thing that happens to me today, I'm doing pretty good. So uh, the first one, or the first pair, is Unsplash and Pexels. So these are both sites where you can, uh, you can really find amazing, amazing pictures, all right? I mean, they're just beautiful. These are professional photographers who, who share really high quality images understand that because that's the case, they may be taking pictures of things that are they're very kind of artsy and not necessarily good for, you know, like, an, like the entire audience, you know, raise an eyebrow kind of stuff. However, maybe you're using these just to find really high quality images for what you do. And, and, and that works just fine. More mature students, no problem using it. Uh, I would also point out, you know, kind of the strength of something like photos for class. And Susan, if you want, I mean, you know, talk, talk a little bit about how you thought about photos for class. So I really like this one for the younger learners because you don't come across as many of those questionable images in your search. And it does give them some of that citation. So when the image downloads, the citation's already included. So we're just really modeling that best practice and giving them opportunities to just see what citation looks like. So when they find a photo and they download it, it has it there. And they can start to see what that best practice and you know just being a good digital citizen looks like when it comes to citing your sources but it is really nice because they're all images that are you know they're for reuse they're appropriately um licensed for classroom use and then also they're a little bit more appropriate for you know when it comes to the elementary learners especially you're going to come across less uh questionable content over there Without a doubt. And toss in, toss in a link. Oh, you got it. Photos for class. Very nice. And now, when you think about photos for class, you know, in, in that when you download the image, it appends a, uh, a, a citation to it. And it's like, wow, that's great. Yeah, it is great. And it's great for younger students to use at, in order to get them thinking about, oh, that thing's important. Well, what do you see in that information? You know, let's talk about it. For older students, it might be a bit too much of a crutch. But on the other hand, you know, you got to start people somewhere. And if that's where they need to start, that's where they need to start. That's a part of how this works. And then finally, Google Arts and Culture. And if you haven't spent time with Google Arts and Culture, oh my, this is, this is as cool a thing on the internet as I can point to. Uh, so many possibilities with it. Loads and loads of images from all over the world, museums, galleries, uh, talented people who are involved in historical work. There's just all kinds of great stuff there. Uh, and know that as you do this, you can build your own collections uh, of art, you know, kind of your own little art collection uh, as a part of arts and culture uh, .google .com. Uh, and, and no matter what you teach, you can start class with great art. Why not? Right. Why not? Because if you're allowing students to make creative connections with the, with the content that you teach, you can get them in a space where they're doing uh, far more engaged work with whatever it is that you require of them. Susan, how about you? What, what are some of the things you talk about with your teachers with arts and culture? Well, one thing I like about all art, arts and culture is that we can uh, go deeper into some of the art. I know in our reading curriculum, sometimes there'll be little, you know, four inch photographs of some of these pictures. And it's nice that they could see them right there in color in their textbooks. But when we look at it in Google Arts and Culture, they see the full screen, they can dig around, they can zoom in, they get a nice 
full screen view of these items. They could sometimes even see it in 360. They can go around and get uh, different perspectives of what it might look like using that um, Google Arts and Culture. So a lot of resources that they could take a deeper dive than perhaps that you know picture printed on their textbook. Very nice. So let's talk about why we're talking about this period, right? Uh, when, when we think about what it means to teach, whether we're in person or online, and we have this role, and this role should be you know, front and center for all that we do. We, we care, we care for our students, we care for their learning. You know, and, and that's not just like it, it matters to us. We are the people who, who take, take charge of that. You know, like it, it's, up, it's up to us in so many ways to help kids see new possibilities in themselves. For that, we have to also take care of ourselves. Uh, at a time like this, when so much is stressful, when so many different, you know, different things are, are vying for our attention and, uh, and, and keeping us from, from you know, living you know, kind of the, the normalized lives that we're used to, this is a time when your students need you. They need you to be people who, who show them that there are possibilities in this, that, that, that you still have confidence in who they can be and what kinds of learning they can do. And, and it's harder. It, it's harder to do this, but on the other hand, it's all the more meaningful because they see it happening from you. So make sure that's a part of how this works. So let's wind down. Uh, first of all, nextvista.org is, uh, is my site of videos that I told you about before. Please give it a good look. The, the newsletter is something that I hope you will enjoy. Take, take a look, go to that page, sign up for the newsletter, and, and it can benefit you in lots of ways. First of all, not just info about our contests and stuff, but you know, cool ideas to share and loads, loads of freebies, right? Things you might wanna watch, things you might wanna read, things you might wanna try, but all free. And, and I, I get lots of, lots of nice compliments on, you know, like that every month where people are like, oh, you know, I so love this thing that, that you, thank you so much for pointing me. I love, I love getting those kind of notes, right? Uh, additionally, we do, we do a free caffeine drawing every month. Free caffeine drawing, what are you talking about? So there's going to be something in the newsletter that says, do this, this, and this, and we'll toss your name in the hat for, for a possible Starbucks card, five dollar. And, and you might say, well, you know, you probably send it to a lot of people. Yeah, about 8,000. Oh, I'd never win. Well, actually, the very few people think that there's a chance that they do, so they go to the trouble of entering. So I actually can sometimes have like fewer than five people enter. It's nuts. So please get in, please enter, and win something, because that's all the more fun than not winning something in the Just Saying department. Some more things. Uh, we're doing a video contest right now. We've extended the deadline into May. Creatively explain something in 90 seconds in a cool video. Get kids thinking about this possibility. You know, you could have them do an assignment where what they do is they try writing out scripts uh, about, about different things they might wanna, might wanna do. Uh, Susan, if you would toss uh, that link into the chat, we'll get that in there for people. And we get, we get a load of wonderful videos as we go, right? So what we'd love to see is to have you get your students involved at, at this time when they've got maybe a little more time to think about how to make these connections as they go. Another contest we do every year, also with a deadline pushed into May due to our circumstances, is service via video. These are videos that kids make about the good that organizations and people in their communities do. And in, in two minutes or less, tell, tell that story. Uh, this allows kids to kind of see themselves as people capable of creating a compelling story that can be useful to folks now, which is, which is a really powerful moment for a lot of students. I hope you'll give that a look. And if you have any questions, just stay in touch with me. I'm very happy to help. Uh, we, we make that available to everybody. And one of the things that people love about our contest, by the way, is that we have feedback uh, to, to the students on, on what we do. So if you're like, wow, feedback, you know, right. So the kid turns something in, there's music, no credit. We'll write back and say, so like it, but there's no credit for the music. Add that, showing it comes from one of the sites listed in the rules, and we can judge it. And the teacher's like, ha, ah, I told that kid five times to put that in, you know, that, that kind of thing. Uh, I write a blog called Inspiring Improvement. Uh, feel free to give that a look. I hope that the ideas there will be useful to you. Uh, and I've written some books. I've written some books on making your teaching better, you know, working with your team to make your school better. Uh, and the new one from December, I call Technology Teamwork and Excellence for leaders and, and, and quick ideas on how to use technology to inspire the people that you work with. You know, I hope you'll give, uh, give that a, a look as well. And I think we got a, a, a link in there on RussianH.com writing. Let's add that one in as well. That would be great. If you are curious about what kind of cool PD could happen as a part of all of this kind of stuff, stay in touch with me. While, while the individual uh, application deadline has passed, for merit at the Krauss Center for Innovation and, and Foothill College in Los Altos Hills, California. 
uh, we're still looking to add a couple of teams, right? So if you and, and one or two other people that you work with are interested in doing this, get in touch with me. There's a link to the contact page at NextVista and, and we can start exploring that. Uh, if you are, you're interested in doing some really, really good PD, which will either be in person or online in July, uh, and online at all other times, then, then give it a look. I'd, I'd love to talk to you about how this works. So if you have some questions, uh, Susan and I are gonna stick around. Uh, we, we love sharing ideas with people, uh, but it, it is time to finish up. So I'll let Susan uh, do, do the first honors on that front. Yeah, well, thank you so much for coming, you guys. And uh, you can reach out to me there. You can find me on Twitter at Tech Coach Susan. And uh, if you follow the hashtag k 2 can you'll see there's a lot of great sharing and learning about what little learners can do, really empowering our young learners to create and share uh, using some modern tools. And I'm, I'm just, again, feel free to reach out, find me at Tech Coach, Tech Coach Susan on Twitter. Yeah, Susan, if you would add add the, the link to your Twitter handle uh, and then also uh, maybe a, a, a hashtag search in Twitter so people can go straight to that to see what, what you've got there. Uh, there's a couple different ways to get in touch with me here and, and resources there as well. What we want to do is we want to get the, the slides for what we've done into the chat. Uh, that allows us to, to get so many, so many cool pieces to you. Where do I have these slides? Right there. I will throw that in there as we're getting some, some good stuff into the chat. Uh, if you are watching this as a recording, then just know that there's probably another link on the page where you found this recording uh, that is designed to get you to the slides and the chat as well. So there's me, or at least the peanutizeme.com version of me. Uh, and that was as gray as I could get the hair. So, you know, there you go. But we're really excited that you joined us. Uh, we're about to have a you know, little, little extra time with the people who are in the chat. But for those of you who have been watching the recording, Thank you again for, for taking your time to, uh, to learn with us about the different things we've got going on. And uh, let us know if there's something specific that you're hoping to find in one of our, our future episodes, because we, we love sharing this stuff and we love hearing from you. So stay safe, stay healthy, and inspire your kids.